Okay, taking it to this live news event. We just saw the pictures of uh, President Putin's official plane landing there in China. He is there along with the other leaders just arrived for the G20 summit in China, the uh, uh, 11th G20 summit getting underway on September the 4th. It's the first to be held in the country. China's done everything possible to make sure the eastern city of Hangzhou, that's where he is, sparkles for the arrival of these world leaders. You can see, you can see live pictures here. Uh, plenty of leaders going to arrive there. Um, President Obama got there earlier. And of course, the big news that's come out today, the US and China have together responsible, it must be said, for 40% of the world's carbon emissions have uh, both ratified that Paris Global Climate Agreement. That was big news to come out from that, but they've got a lot to talk about. President Putin getting in the official limousine. And he is guest of honor there, has a good relationship uh, with the uh, Chinese uh, President Xi Jinping, and it seems that uh, top, one of the seats at the top table has been uh, uh, put aside for him. Representatives from Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, the list goes on. Also, of course, uh, the UK as well. Theresa May, she's going to be there. And also Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president of Turkey. It's thought there's going to be uh, quite a long meeting between President Putin and uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan behind uh, closed doors later. So a lot to cover there. We'll be across that over the next uh, two days. But as you can see, that official Russia plane and the limousine driving off. President Putin now, after leaving Vladivostok in the far east of Russia, is now there for that G20. We'll keep you posted. Now, ahead of the event, the city was given a multi-billion dollar makeover. People in one uh, rundown area were even urged to, uh, I'm quoting here, wipe out flies, cockroaches, mosquitoes and rodents from the streets. All the uh, city's factories have been shut down to minimise pollution and keep the sky clear. Still looked a bit smoggy, though, didn't it? Local schools have been given an extended holiday, and families have even been given some holiday vouchers. So if they want to, they can leave that city to ease the congestion. I like you. So a nice smiley welcome then. That was the official uh, promo video for the summit. But despite all the optimism surrounding that event in China and the smiles, tensions are high between some of the leaders attending that G20. Some of the uh, most anticipated meetings, as I mentioned just now, are going to be with the Turkish president. Recep Erdogan's already in Hangzhou. He was warmly welcomed uh, by the Chinese leader in a joint conference a bit earlier. Also, the presidents of the US, and as you've just seen, Russia are there now, and they're due to meet Erdogan at some point later on today. Wrapping up what we know so far a correspondence there. This is Daniel Hawkins now. President Erdogan is one of the first foreign leaders Putin will be meeting here in Hangzhou at G20. This follows a nine-month freeze in relations between the two countries following the downing of that Russian jet last year on the Syrian-Turkish border. Uh, Erdogan subsequently apologized for that incident and in return received Putin's support in the wake of that attempted coup in Turkey. Now Erdogan has proposed that, uh, uh, that uh, Russia and Turkey fight ISIL together in Syria. This, of course, comes in the wake of quite a tense relationship between Ankara, uh, Washington and uh, NATO. The Turkish president effectively giving Washington a ultimatum that they must choose between Turkey's allegiance and hosting in their country Fethullah Gulen, the Turkish opposition leader who, at least according to Turkish authorities, was behind the planning of that uh, attempted coup. There's been quite a lot of uh, accusations to and fro between the two. Ankara accusing Washington of a lack of cooperation. Washington accusing the Turks of targeting the Kurds in Syria rather than ISIL. Very much an interesting time here. All eyes will be uh, on that meeting with Erdogan and Putin. Uh, the US nevertheless calling Turkey still one of its key allies in the region. So it remains to be seen here what the outcome of that meeting will be. Yeah, and the meeting uh, between the presidents of China and the U.S. is also highly anticipated. Both leaders have attended a ceremony with the U.N. secretary, formally signing their countries up, as I mentioned again just now. It's that Paris climate agreement. That's real big news today, which is aimed to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. But despite all the smiles and all the handshakes, there are still reasons for the countries to feel tense.
As soon as he landed in China, uh, President Obama declared Beijing must avoid flexing its muscles in the South China Sea. Earlier this week, a former Air China employee was indicted for smuggling packages onto flights too from New York to China on behalf of Chinese officials. We asked a current affairs commentator from China Radio International about the timing of that sentence. I, I think it's more like a coincidence instead of uh, uh, intentionally arranged a case here. There are problems, of course, uh, you know, especially when the U.S. launched this um, uh, strategic initiative uh, called you know, Pivot to Asia a few years ago. You do see there are uh, increasing tensions, especially the U.S. military uh, maneuver. Uh, you can see they have increased the number of military bases in Asian countries, in the Philippines, in uh, Australia, and also uh, intensified in military presence in other countries, like uh, relationship with Vietnam, uh, in Singapore. Uh, but the thing is, uh, you know, China is not seeking, say, a dominant position in Asia or in the world. So I think there's a misjudgment or strategic misjudgment from the U.S. side. Um, 